We've now learned how to instantiate a plugin and to hook into the init hook and create a custom post type for a uh, custom plugin. Now what we want to do is we want to enqueue some scripts, so our style sheets and our JavaScript files, just in case we need to use them. And so that our plugin has the ability to be customized visually as well. And also scripts, uh, JavaScript can be added to that plugin. So to do that, we are, as you guessed it, going to be using another hook. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to comment this. So we'll do create custom post type. And the next one will be add assets. So JS, CSS, etc. We'll add another action and that action is called WP underscore in Q underscore scripts. Make sure you spell that correctly. That happens a lot with that particular word. Uh, and then we need to obviously create a method. So we'll go down, we'll create a new method and we'll just call it load underscore assets. And then we'll refer to that. So array, this comma load underscore assets. And that will do the callback to that function or that method when this hook gets loaded. Now with inside of this particular method, we just want to enqueue a style. So let's create a new style sheet. We'll just call it simple contact form dot CSS. And I've placed it into a CSS folder. And then inside the load assets, method will do WP in Q style. And this accepts a couple of arguments. So if I use this little WordPress snippets plugin I have on VS code, let's go and do it again. You'll see that it comes up here. So we have a few things that it automatically tells me the handle, which uh, is just a string. So that would just be the name. So we'll just call it simple contact form because that's the name of the plugin and that would be that would refer to it in the CSS file when it gets loaded. I'll just make this nice and neat. And I'll also close it off. The source, which will be the location of the actual file. So we use a PHP magic constant so that the plugin knows exactly where it's located. So firstly, we'll use plugin the URL, which is the function that a WordPress function. And then inside there, we use this magic constant called underscore underscore file and then underscore underscore again. And that gives basically WordPress the absolute URL or absolute location of that file. And then we just need to obviously point it. So this is giving the absolute location to the plugin folder and then uh, CSS and then simple contact form dot CSS. Now the dependencies, we have no dependencies for this CSS file. If you, if you use Bootstrap or something, maybe uh, you could put Bootstrap in there, but I don't think it's really going to cause many problems if you didn't. So we'll just do array is a blank array. We'll make the version uh, one, uh, version one, I think. And then we'll do the media, which will just be all. So as opposed to using, you know, screen or print or something like that, we'll just do all. So we'll hit save now and we'll go back to our plugin and I'll go to the main screen and it doesn't look any different of course, but if we go to view the code, we should see now that we have our style sheet that got loaded and we can click into it and it's blank of course, but it does have those two forward slashes there. So I do want to fix that. We don't need this forward slash here. Save it again, refresh it. And you should see now that it's there. So if we go into our, CSS now and we do something like body background black important and then load it back up and refresh it it's working it's loading into our theme so obviously you don't want to override uh, things from the theme like I just did but this will allow us to customize our form now so now we've wired up our CSS file I'll delete that CSS there and let's enqueue a JS uh, so JavaScript as well. So we may very well not use JavaScript in this tutorial, but I will show you how to enqueue it, of course. It's very similar to the enqueue style. It's just w WP enqueue script. And then I'll use the uh, WordPress snippets for that. Same kind of thing. So the handle, which is, we'll call it the same thing, which is um, simple contact form. 
and I'll make this pretty again or easy, easier to read. Second one will be the source. So we'll just copy this here, paste it in there and we will point it to a JS folder, which doesn't exist yet. New folder JS and make sure when you create the new folder, you do an index.php and in there, open up the tags and do silence is golden. <laughs> That's just one of the standard things WordPress says. You can put whatever you want, of course. It's just the comment. Uh, and we'll change this to simple contact form.js and we'll create it there. So simple contact form.js done. Uh, the dependencies, again, if you have a dependency for say J jQuery, you could do array and inside there jQuery. And of course you could reference other, other scripts as well. Uh, we'll. We'll use that. We'll actually leave it like that. The version will just be one. And in footer, if you want the JavaScript to come up in the footer as opposed to the header, we'll just do true in this case, but you, it depends on your use case. So let's go back to our plugin again, and we have our black screen there. We'll refresh it. The black screen's gone, of course, but if we scroll down to the footer, we should see simple contact form down there now, and we can click into it and it's blank, of course. Uh, but let's go into our JS file now, and let's do alert. Does it work? Refresh. And there we go. So our JavaScript works now. Cool. So we might not have to use that in our plugin, but it's just there just in case. Okay. So now that we've loaded our styles in, let's load in a short code that we can put into our front end of our website, which will be the home to our form on the front end. To do that, we're going to go into our construct method of our plugin again. And we are going to add a comment. So I'll just put add short code. And the short code will be something obviously that you put into the, into the code or into the editor of the website. So it shows the code of the, or sorry, it shows the form. So we're going to do add short code, which is a uh, function, a WordPress function. And we're going to call it contact dash form. That is what we're going to, the short code is actually going to be. So when you put that in, it's going to load up whatever we uh, pass through the callback. So let's add the callback in this. And we obviously haven't created the method yet. So let's go create the method public function. Uh, we'll just call it load short code and then go back up here and do load short code. And then what we can do is we can just output some HTML to see if it actually works. So let's just go back here and we'll do return. Hello, the short code is working. Okay, so we'll go into our WordPress and we'll edit the front page of our WordPress uh, website and you'll see I'm using Gutenberg and I'm just going to use it because uh, I mean, I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to get away from eventually having to use Gutenberg. So we'll add a new block and I believe there's a block for a short code and there is. Yep. So let's click into that. Let's add it. And the short code will be contact dash form. Let's update it and go back to the front page of the website and you should see, okay, it's just saying contact form there. That shouldn't be happening. So what have we done incorrectly here? I think I know what I've done. If we go to edit page, I actually got to make it a short code. So contact dash form like that with the square brackets as well. Go back here. Okay, good. Okay. So the short code is now working. So as you can see, we've used the add short code function to create a short code, which is called contact dash form. And it, it uses a callback of a function called load underscore short code, which is down here. And this is what returns whatever we want. Okay, so we can basically, you know, return input type equals text and go back, refresh, and there's our form there. But 
In my opinion, doing it this way is a bit hard. So what we want to do is a different type of function. It's, it's still obviously a function, but it just allow, allows us to kind of do inline HTML and PHP as if we were doing it in its own PHP document. So to do that, let's just delete that and do a, a curly bracket pointing to the right, a question mark and a closing arrow. And then we want to do at the end, a left arrow, question mark, PHP, and then the opposite side of this curly bracket pointing to the left. What that allows us to do now is essentially type in standard HTML into a function. So if I just do that and hit save and hit refresh, you'll see that it works just the same way. It just makes it easier for us to kind of build the form without having to return and all, all that sort of stuff. So let's start out with this form. The first thing we'll do is we'll just do an H1. We'll call it send us an email. And then I'll put a P, a paragraph, please fill the below form. And then let's just do input type equals text. And that give it a placeholder and we'll put name. And then we'll create one called email, which will be email. And we'll create one called phone. So we'll make that tell I'm using the HTML five ta tags, phone. And then the last one will be a text area. Uh, and the text area will just have a placeholder of type your message. We'll hit save and we will refresh it. Cool. All right. So look how ugly that looks. So what we want to do is maybe make this look a bit better. Now, I don't want to bring in Bootstrap into my plugin because a, a, a framework should not be brought into a plugin, but I'm going to bring it into my actual theme. And in this case, it already is in the theme and it is a Bootstrap uh, theme, Bootstrap 5, sorry. So let's use some Bootstrap classes to make it look a bit better. We obviously need to encapsulate this in form tags. And let's wrap our whole form in a div. This is for styling purposes, by the way. And we'll just give it a class and the class will just call it simple contact form as well so that we know we can style the actual wrapper of the form. Uh, let's give the form itself an ID, simple contact form two underscores form. And then we will also create a button. So this will be just a, a button to uh, submit the form. And I'll do class equals BTN, BTN success, BTN block. These are all bootstrap ones. So you don't have to use it if you don't want to. And we'll just do send message. Let's see if it looks any better. Probably won't yet, no. Uh, but what we then need to do is just give these inputs a class for bootstrap just class form dash control. Refresh it now that it's looking slightly better. But typically what I'll do is I would put a form group around each specific field. And that will put the necessary spacing between each input. Cool, go back, refresh, and there's still nothing, no real difference. So let's do some margin, bottom two. Okay, and maybe the main uh, button can be width of 100. There we go. Okay, so we have the basics done with this form. Uh, I'm not gonna style it anymore right now because that kind of defeats the purpose of what uh, what this tutorial is about. It's more about creating a plugin and not teaching how to design. 
So now that we have our form set up basically uh, with a name field, email field, telephone field, and a text area, let's name these fields. And this is for purely when we submit the form that we that the backend knows what form is, what field is what. So we'll do name equals, and this is name obviously. We'll do name email for this one. We'll do name equals phone for this one. And we'll do name equals message for the text area. Okay, great. So let's save that and try and fill it out and see what happens. I'll just put anything in there. Hit send message and it does nothing. And it just puts it in the, uh, the, the, the URL of the website. So how are we gonna actually make this post to the back end of WordPress? Well, stick around. In the next video, we're gonna learn how to use the WordPress REST API to post the data to the back end of WordPress and create our custom post type entry using the data sent from this form. I'll see you then.